The question of what Jesus looked like in terms of his skin color has been a matter of dispute for several decades. The notion that Jesus was white has been advanced by people with white skin color, and this belief has been embraced by many Christians, both those with white and those with non-white skin color. Consequently, a lot of people have grown up believing that Jesus was white. The Bible does not provide an in-depth description of Jesus' physical appearance, instead emphasizing his teachings, actions, and spiritual significance. Nevertheless, scholars and historians have made several suppositions about his appearance based on the cultural and geographical context of his time. The Middle East, where Jesus lived, is characterized by a diverse population with an array of skin tones, usually ranging from light olive to medium dark brown, reflecting the broader Semitic ancestry. Scholars surmise that Jesus most likely had a darker complexion, which was typical among the Semitic people of the Middle East. The common belief that Jesus was white is primarily based on artistic portraits and depictions in movies. However, there are very few accounts in the Bible that describe his physical appearance, making it difficult to substantiate his skin color. Some scholars believe that Revelation 1.14.15 provides a hint that Jesus had a darker skin tone and woolly hair. The text describes his hair as white as white wool, white as snow, and mentions his eyes as being like a flame of fire and his feet as being like burnished bronze, refined as in a furnace. The conventional Western portrayal of Jesus with fair skin, blue eyes, and blonde or light brown hair is far from historically accurate. These depictions are more indicative of the European societies in which they were created than the true appearance of a Jewish man from the first century who lived in the Middle East. The physical appearance of biblical or ancient figures is more important than what they say when it comes to visual arts, including how they are illustrated in books or depicted on screens. This has resulted in a particular race denigrating other races, believing that biblical figures originated from their race when there is no evidence to support their beliefs. They believe that their race is superior to others based on the great feats that biblical figures performed. Before we proceed any further, I kindly request you to take a moment and hit the like button to show your appreciation for this enlightening piece of content. Additionally, it would be wonderful if you could share it with your friends and family members so they too can be enlightened. And lastly, don't forget to subscribe to Extra Narrative to stay updated with our latest videos. Thank you for your support. The research says in countries where white people are the majority, there is a growing concern among white Christians regarding the representation of Jesus. Many of them tend to believe that Jesus was white and they are more likely to accept this notion than the idea of a black Jesus. In case Jesus is portrayed as black, they may feel uneasy and may prefer to worship a white Jesus instead. Interestingly, in Russia, there is a unique tradition where Jesus is depicted as black. This fact was revealed by Vladimir Putin himself, who disclosed that Russia has a vault containing an image of black Jesus. It is fascinating to note how different cultures and traditions have varying depictions of Jesus which can influence people's perceptions and beliefs. So how did the white Jesus come to be? According to Joni Taylor, 
a professor of Christian origins and Second Temple Jerusalem at King's College, the depiction of Jesus as a white man is a product of cultural history. So in the 4th and 5th century, they were trying to find an image of Jesus that would really say something, that would give people some theological clues to what he really meant. And we get this image of Jesus with the long hair parted in the middle, the beard, the big robes, actually starting off 4th century and then the, the really sh shown really beautifully in Santa Pudenziana from the beginning of the 5th century. So I don't know, many of you will have gone to Rome and, and perhaps gone to Santa Pudenziana. It's a, a lovely little church and the apse mosaic there has this image of Jesus dressed in a gold toga looking very much the ruler of the world. He's sitting on a bejeweled throne. He's incredibly in charge. And it seemed to be saying, trust Jesus, he is the guy who rules everything. This is Jesus who is glorified at the end of time. It's very much a cosmic Jesus. You can see uh, the four heavenly beasts in the, the sky above him. It's all about glory. And the reason Jesus was portrayed in this way with the, the hair and the beard is because they were trying to bring out a memory for the viewers of what they were familiar with in terms of images of Zeus and other gods who had this big hair, long hair and a beard. So Jesus becomes a kind of mini Zeus, a son of Zeus. But what happened was that image of Jesus, that God image of Jesus, then gets transformed into a kind of historical figure. So Jesus is then imagined as looking like that as walking around Judea and Galilee in the first century. The earliest portrayals of Jesus that set the standard for how he is still depicted today were based on the image of an enthroned emperor and influenced by depictions of pagan gods. The long hair and beard were directly imported from the iconography of the Greco-Roman world. Some of the oldest surviving depictions of Jesus portray him as a younger version of Jupiter, Neptune or Serapis. In the uh, second, third century, another type of Zeus called Serapis from Egypt was very popular in the Roman Empire and he had indeed these long robes, exactly the Jesus robes, being worn by Zeus Serapis. Um, and people saw this and, and recognized that Jesus was better than Zeus Serapis or, or a, a young version of, of this god. As time progressed, the halo from the sun, god Apollo, was added to Jesus' head to depict his divine nature. In early Christian art, he frequently had the big curly hair of Dionysus. These depictions were never intended to portray Jesus as a man, but to make theological points about who Jesus was as Christ, King, Judge and Divine Son. We hope that you found the information we shared with you to be enlightening and thought-provoking. We'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions, so please share them with us in the comments section below. And hey, if you liked what you saw, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss out on our future videos. Thank you so much for watching, and we can't wait to see you again in our next video.